What is up friends? My name is Laura. If you've never visited my YouTube channel before, welcome. So before I get out hiking again tomorrow, I actually want to bring you back to my trip in Tanzania to actually be hiking Kilimanjaro. If you don't know already, I did do a former series. I was vlogging every single day. I also talked about getting ready for it, post tips, all of these things. I also wanted to do a quick video, a quick sit down because I've been getting some other questions. And these are going to be my eight tips so that you too can can summit Kilimanjaro successfully. Whether that means you are curious what the heck it takes to summit a mountain like Kilimanjaro, or you are training at the moment for Kilimanjaro and that's on your bucket list and you're wondering, are there some little advantages along the way? Yes, yes there are. Although I'm going to make sure to link all of my videos about Kilimanjaro down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, I don't know what you're doing. Click that little subscribe button. It will allow you to see my future hiking videos, some tips, especially for newbies, or if you're trying to do these big mountains like Kilimanjaro. Okay, so let's officially get started. The first one is actually just going to be choosing the route. I actually did one of the shortest routes that you possibly can do. Um, I really just did this because I didn't have a lot of time to take off work. So that actually, that route allowed me to do it in five days. A lot of people do that one in six days. Um, so if that's something that you are looking for, there is those possibilities. The thing is, is the you have a much better success rate. It's higher than 80% if you are actually on the mountain for seven days or more. So a lot of these hikes, you actually, and these routes, you're able to start on one side of the mountain and actually come down a different side. So you're getting a different view each day. A lot of those are seven to 10 days. So the longer you're actually on the mountain, the more time you're giving your body to adjust to that acclimatization. Tanzania is not in general a really high area. So when you're talking about something like Colorado, all of the cities like Breckenridge are actually really high. So then when you go to do those 14ers, they don't seem so... <laughs> Since Breckenridge is almost sitting at 10,000 feet and then you're getting to 14,000. When it comes to Kilimanjaro, I remember looking at my Garmin and I was like, oh my gosh, I am sitting at like 2,000 feet right now. <laughs> I'm supposed to get to over 19,000. This is gonna be a long couple of days, but that is what you're looking at. So the longer you're able to stay on the mountain, the better your chances are to acclimatize and then better to summit. The second one is going to be communicating with your guide and your team in general. Communication, like any relationship, is a great thing. And this is the very same thing when it comes to a guide and your relationship. So whether that means you are struggling, whether that means you're feeling great, being honest and communicating with them will be great. If you are you know, struggling to eat because of the altitude or you are just feeling kind of sick, letting them know those kind of things because maybe that means you should be taking that next day off. Maybe that means you should be going a lot slower. Maybe that means they can help you and help you understand what your body's going through. The other reason you want to communicate is something like, you know, you might have specific dietary needs or you don't like certain foods and they might be, you know, telling the chef to be cooking you that and your body would actually probably do a lot better with another type of meal. For example, myself, um, I know that oatmeal for a lot of people would be a really great meal. For some reason, it upsets my stomach if I have too much. So starting my day, a hiking day, I said like, I just can't actually eat a lot of oatmeal at all. So we kind of like just switched up. Another thing might be <laughs> like, like they cooked me pizza, which is wonderful after summit day and uh, I hate all those. So they didn't put all those on there. And just little things like that will honestly make your experience so much better. So make sure you're communicating with your team and especially your guide. The third one, I know I've said this before, and if you ever look up anything about Kilimanjaro, you will see this, is to be going slow. When you're going through uh, you know, acclimatizing. You just want to be going slow. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a marathon. It is not a sprint. So a lot of those days are going to be longer, but when you actually look at the mileage that you're doing that day, you're probably not doing much more than six miles, but it might need to take you around six hours. And that might not even be because you're having crazy elevation. You just want to be going slow and will help with the climatization, but also it will just help your breathing. If you're looking at your heart rate, I'm just kind of grabbing my Garmin as I say that. If you're looking at your heart rate, you will want it to be kind of just not being spiked too high. And that means you're going slow. In Swahili, they are going to say pole pole, which means slow, slow, just go slow. You will hear that all the time on the mountain. The fourth one, honestly, is probably my specific personal, make sure you do this before 
you actually get onto that mountain and that is getting the right gear. So a lot of people will rent their gear, which not, is not a bad thing once they're actually in Tanzania. But the thing is, is, you know, you want that gear to fit you. You want to feel comfortable with it. Um, you also want to have good gear and you don't want to like cheap out. So for example, if you're having hiking boots, don't just go over there and rent them quickly and then start on a 10 day hike. Your blisters are going to be insane or get a, even a new pair from you know North America, go over there and then start on them. Please like break things in, know what you're working with. It will be extra, but I can promise you that it'll be worth it. The worst thing that can, I, not the worst thing that can happen, but you know, when you're on the mountain and it's pouring down rain and it probably will, and you're wearing a jacket that said waterproof, but you're like, oh, I'm sure it is, but you'd never even tested it out. And you are just soaked and freezing and you can't get warm. Imagine just have, spending a little bit more money and actually getting that waterproof thing that's actually gonna keep you dry and warm and you're feeling good. Like I can notice such a difference in different people when they have gear that they're enjoying, they're not getting a million blisters, they feel good. It's gonna help you just feel amazing up there having like items that you feel confident with. To this same topic, I also will say having lots of spare batteries, whether that means you can, you've charged them before or you just have some spare ones in your pocket. Um, when your uh, like headlamp gets really cold, it will zap the batteries. Same with your phone. So things like that, you really wanna have extra batteries within your pocket or keeping your phone warmer within your pocket while you are hiking. And I say phone just for the picture at the summit, but when it comes to um, making sure that you can make that summit, you're not going to be able to if it's pitch black and you cannot see in front of you. Um, I can promise you that. So making sure that you not only have a good headlamp, that you trust that you know will make it through that 16 hour day, but also one that you do have quite a few different batteries within your pocket that you know are fully charged or for sure working. I normally actually have about six if my headlamp is requiring to make sure that that is on your list as well. Next one is what I probably say in almost any acclimatization video is making sure that you are drinking tons of water. Drinking tons of water will help you so much with acclimatizing along the way. This means starting a couple days before you actually start the hike and starting to chug, chug, chug. Your body won't really be used to it. Your bladder's like, what's going on? You're going to get up throughout the night and suddenly have to pee way more than you're used to. I know it's super annoying, but it will make your body feel so much better. I promise you that. And also on that same note, like some of them, some times a year, I was there one of the colder times a year. It honestly might freeze. So making sure you have more of a Nalgene that doesn't have too small of a lid where it actually could get frozen. That's why I normally don't, I, or I didn't take my camel back up there. I just took a couple of Nalgenes. The sixth tip I will keep nice and short, but it's to make sure to be training for this mountain. I did do a full video. I will link that below and put it up top for training for Kilimanjaro. Make sure you don't go into it and think, oh, I, I'm sure I can do it. It'll make your body feel so much better if you are prepared and do know a little bit what you're doing. And even if you're in a country that there's not a lot of elevation or you're in a city, you can still be going out there and getting in some, you know, running or go on the Stairmaster at your local gym, anything like that. So do train for Kilimanjaro. Seventh one is having plenty of snacks, especially for that summit day. Your body's really going to be going through so many calories. And this isn't the time to be like, maybe I can lose five pounds. It's not because you're going to just need that energy and those, that energy should be high calories. So don't look at something and be like, oh, it's gluten-free, fat-free, whatever I'm trying to say, low calorie, little bar, whatever. Grab that Snickers, have some candy within your pocket that's an easy reach. Have them every, you know, 30 minutes. Your body will really, really like that extra sugar and it will really will give you energy to get to that summit. The final recommendation that I have and tip for getting you to the summit of Kilimanjaro is to believe in yourself. And I feel like this probably sounds silly, but it really does help. You know, it's kind of like that self-talk, you're listening to yourself in your head and it might be saying, you can't do this, you didn't train hard enough, or you know, you're not as experienced as you know that person back there. No, if you wanna get to that summit, you can get to that summit. You know, unless there's like some medical issues that are happening along that way, but it is important for you to believe in yourself along the way. And that also is that you are not going to be comfortable. And I'm not saying you're never going to be comfortable, but if you're someone that's not used to sleeping in tents, but you're okay to sleep in a tent, understand that, 
you know, you're going to, you're going to be sleeping in a tent. It doesn't mean you always get the best sleep. You understand that you might get pouring rain and you still are hiking through it. Understand that you might be getting snow, that you're going to be waking up at midnight for the summit. All of those things aren't actually super fun. They are a type of fun that not everyone likes to have. But if you believe in yourself and you understand that you're going to be in maybe these kind of crappy situations that you kind of wish you didn't put yourself in, but actually it's going to be totally worth it at the summit. I hope that you did like this video. If you did, please just give it a quick thumbs up. It really does help me and is the smallest little thing that you can do to hopefully just show your quick appreciation for me making these videos. I really do try to make them for you all out there that either is needing some inspiration to get out there and do these crazy hikes or of course, like I was saying, just curious on what the heck it takes to climb one of the seven summits of the world. I do appreciate you sitting around till the end and I will see you soon in the next video for some more actual hiking right around the Bay Area. Keep living life. Bye.